Okay, um, I've switched the base of my loom uh, from my from the middle of my foot to my toes, to between my toes. Um, I just get a little bit more control, a little bit more um, length to be able to pull tighter. Um, if that hurts you, you should wear some socks or something like that to protect your feet. Um, or you can continue. You can still do this with the the loops between around your your feet. Um, it just this is just I feel it's even easier as I'm discovering as I'm um, I'm working on um, uh, researching and understanding and, and perfecting this technique. Um, the other thing is is that as you move along, you want to continue to kind of I'm trying to match and measure and make sure that my that the width of my feet are accurate enough to create a match um, for the one I've already made. So um, if you were, you, you can use um, an outline of your shoe. Uh, you can use a shoe itself or an existing sandal or a zori. You could use um, an outline of your foot um, that you can just kind of place and, and gauge about how wide you need to, to create your platform or your sole. So that's, that's how you would measure um, the length. Um, what I've seen is I've seen some waraji that are actually quite narrow uh, as it relates to the foot. Um, they were typically worn with tabi uh, boots or socks. So the foot is already protected with the, the cloth of the boot or the sock. It was just needed for extra traction and protection on the heel and sole of the foot. So uh, I'm going to continue on here and pretty soon we're going to be adding a loop. And just to reiterate, I want to go over, I want to go um, over, I want to go up under and then over and then under so and then I pull through Just pull everything through like so and then back the, back to my right I go under then over then under and then pull through So, okay, like that, pull tight on both sides, pinch, release my fingers, cinch up. Okay, like so. Now I want to constantly keep an eye on whereabouts I need to put my, my, my loops. Um, and so I'm probably going to be one more pass before I need to do my loops. So let's go ahead and just bear with me while I make another pass and then we'll add loops. So go under, over, under. Keep going. So I'm cinching on the right side here, then go under, over, under, back. And if this was thinner cordage, I'm sure um, a shuttle or a needle, uh, like a netting needle, could be used uh, to make the weaving so you don't have to keep stringing the cordage through, which is kind of tedious. Um, but for now, we don't have that kind of tool right now. So I'm continuing this there. So now what I want to do is I want to measure about where I want my loops. And let's say I was starting from scratch and I didn't have a, 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 another a shoe or waraji as a um, measure. So I can go ahead and safely take it off my toes here and then just hold this in place so it doesn't come unraveled. And then I can go ahead and feed the two strings through my toes here because that's how it's going to fit and gauge about where I need to add my loops. And I'm about right there. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is put, I'm going to put this back on my toes. Again, try to keep your feet same distance apart. Okay, and then we're going to add our loops. Okay, and I'm just going to double check. Yep, and that's yeah, that's right on. Okay, from the way it looks to me. Okay, so here, the, here's the here's how you add your loops. Kind of kind of kind of easy. Uh, so what we do is go under, 
over under on our weave. Just pull everything through. here, just a loop, just pull that out and it will behave. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to leave a little bit of extra out, like that, a little loop out. Okay. You can have as long as you want. Um, I like it kind of small about, to be able to fit my thumb through. Okay. And then I'm going to go back the other way with my weave. Keep going until I get to the other side. And again, on the other side, I kind of want to keep make sure that I have a my thumb can fit through. And then what we want to do is we want to go back, okay? So I can insert here and then cinch up. Okay, I'm gonna have to be terribly tight now. Okay, so these are our two loops here and here. And I can make things tight by pulling on and getting things even. Okay, so there's our loops. All right, so then I wanna go back the other way. I'm already, went, I'm gonna go over now. I'm gonna go um, over the, let's see where I'm at. Yeah, this time I wanna go over the top. Uh, uh, over the mid, the second one, underneath the third, and pull out. Okay. Pulling these here. Pulling these. Pulling these. All right. Now, when we get to the end, I want to take this one that's, that I've just pulled through, and pull it over my loop, okay. just like so, and then kind of cinch it so it doesn't go anywhere, and then pull it, okay, then I want to run my weaver back, going over, or under, excuse me, over, under, back the other way, And then, as I start to cinch this through, I'm going to take this side and put this loop over that one. And then I can start to pull tight and adjust. Okay, and then I release my fingers and then I can cinch up and pull. Okay, that'll lock our loops in. And then for good measure, what I like to do is then, before I really start making everything tight again, or tighter I should say, is I run another. So under, over, under, okay, and then under, over, under, back the other way. Now we've just created our first loops right here. Okay. So I'm going to continue on until um, it's time to create our second loops.